Before we go into endoscopy of our patients, we should address one or two things about coronavirus and endoscopy. We know that the reservoir of the virus is in our nasopharynx, in the nose, and in the upper respiratory tract. Now, going through this tract, transnasal, is dangerous. It's not the going through with the endoscope that is dangerous, but the dangerous part is when you take your endoscope out or if the patient sneezes and coughs right in front of you. And we know that getting heavy viral load, viral concentration of droplets into your face so that if you as an examiner inhale that, that's really dangerous. And because of that, we want to take a lot of precautions so that even if something like that happens, we are not in danger. So we now will show you how we do that with our endoscope. We know that with our endoscope type, we have a camera on the tip of the endoscope, which means we watch the monitor, which you can see over here. But we also are aware of the fact that some of you colleagues have the endoscopes without a camera attached, which means you're even closer to the patient's face. And what can you do to protect your patient and protect yourself, of course? What can we do while we are close to the patient? Can we cover the mouth? Can we cover mouth and nose? How do we handle the endoscope when it comes to infectious secretions that we touch? Of course, we have to touch the nose. We are very close to the mask. And can we do that alone? Do we always need an assistant or even two assistants? How do we handle the potentially infected endoscope? How do we handle that over to the assistant? And we will not talk about the cleaning part because the cleaning part is more or less the same that it is all the time. Another fact that is very important for us is that we have to consider this corona situation as something very new for us. So we, were, we learned that infections are maybe the droplets that come directly to us. Everything that we touch is infectious. But we not very often think about the aerosols. And thinking about aerosols in the air, we have to rethink where are we doing our examination? Where we, do we take the history? Now, this is a special situation. And given that in most situations you take the history in the same room where you do the endoscopy, this means that your patient, even if we would have masks, that when the patient exhales through this normal nose mouth cover that the aerosols are in the air. Now maybe there are not many aerosols after a couple of minutes but if the patient sits there let's say 10 minutes or 15 minutes and inhales and exhales then there's this invisible cloud of aerosols. Now how can we get rid of these potentially infection, infectious aerosols? Of course we have to open the windows. Now, within the last weeks, we always do all history taking and examinations with open windows, even sometimes with open doors, because we want the draft, we want the circulation. We don't have an air conditioning system that sucks out enough air in a short time. But the air standing and not circulating is something that is not good for all of our examinations. For history taking, I think it's better because this is a simulated situation. I will take off my mask. The patient has a normal mask, which is, need not be FFP2 or FFP3. We will have a distance like this, which is at least one and a half meters. So this is the situation for history taking. Before the patient comes into the examination room, we, of course, clean our hands and the patient's as well. Please realize that we always have open windows here. And if you have air conditioning, yes, try to ventilate your room. Try to have circulation so that the aerosols don't stay here. There's no exact data how 
quick the aerosols come in a non-circulatory environment from the patient to the doctor, but it could be after, let's say, five or ten minutes, and we don't want to have that risk, so open your windows if you can. Sometimes we also have our doors open, so that even progresses the, the draft in the room. Just a couple of words to how we decongest the nose. Well, up to two months ago, we always sprayed the patient, took a speculum, and then we sprayed, decongested, and then after that we anesthetized with lidocaine spraying. Nowadays, it's strongly advised not to spray because if you spray into your patient's nose, then some of the aerosols and the droplets can come back and infect you. So it's highly advisable to use other methods of decongesting and of numbing. So what do we do now? We use these little monodose decongestants, ask the patient to put it in each uh, nose, or we do that for them, but only in the protected mode. And we don't spray anymore, so we don't use these specula anymore. And for the um, numbing of the nose, we will show you how we use that with this little syringe filled with topical anesthesia, lidocaine 4%, which we will squirt into the nose while the patient is inhaling. After we take the history, then it comes to the endoscopy. For the endoscopy situation, the patient is already sitting in the examination chair, but then we, and we is always two persons, have to change our dressing according to the situation, what we want to do, and we will now show you how we do the normal transnasal flexible laryngoscopy.